Welcome to Your Hero Academia by Fangirl48 on AO3. Chapter 24, USJ, Part 7, Final. It took Bakugo a second to realize what was coming for him, and in that split second, Nomu launched into their attack. Omet was prepared for what was coming. The number one hero leapt into action, gritting his teeth and activating all for one again, grabbing the younger blonde and throwing Bakugo towards Izuku. As the dust settled, Toshinori coughed, taking a brief second to glance back at the students. Bakugo sat safely behind Izuku with a dumbfounded look. Are you okay? Izuku rushed over, making red eyes look directly at him as he searched for injuries. Tell me if you're hurt anywhere. Shit, I... Shut the fuck up! Bakugo roared at the teacher, yanking his head back. The petrified look on his face was not caused by the monster who came for his life just now, but by the hero who had saved him. I... I couldn't even see what happened. The explosion user whispered, wondering if this is what it meant to be a pro. To be the number one hero. Izuku looked back at All Might and pointed at the hero. We do not yeet students. Your lucky eraser head is unconscious, and you... Now, the all-or-nothing user was pointing at the trio of villains as they regrouped. I know you're fucking villains, but that was a dick move. Rather than answering the glitch, Tomura kept his focus on All Might. The hero had grabbed the kid and now taken Nomu's attack. It was annoyingly impressive how the number one could still move so well despite his injuries. Still, Tomura had Kirigiri back, and that was all that mattered. That was impressive, really. But I'm only following your hero's example here. Tomura stood, gritting under her father. Anything to save a comrade, right? Even violence can be forgiven if it's for a good reason. Like that glitch who came at me with everything he had, because he's a baby hero in training. He gets a free pass. Izuku clenched his fists in the dirt, eyes glowing a little brighter. Oh, that little... He's got just as much beef with me right now as I have with him. Fucking trying to bullshit us here, he... Kirishima shushed his teacher, not wanting to draw the villain's attention to them again. Tomura opened his arms, looking down at the hero. Well, that just pisses me off. People putting in little boxes labeled as heroes and villains when the truth is that society just thrives off of violence. We show them. We're like actors in a play and it's time someone closes the curtains on the shitty performance. All Might, I'm gonna show you the world that a tool like you made to oppress us down can die. The decay villain pointed at the hero that violence only breeds bigger, more terrible violence. Your death will... Are you done yet? All Might asked, looking at the ma- No, the child across from him. Because I've met villains who told me that exact same thing, only that they had a real fire in their eyes when they talked about their vision. You're hiding behind fake ideology, hoping we don't see how much you really enjoy this. The ashen-haired villain froze. His head slowly moved, tilted everyone could see the joy in his red eyes. Caught me. At this moment, Izuku knew the most important thing was to keep the students away from the villains. Unfortunately, they appeared to have different ideas. Todoroki shifted, giving his right side a larger area. Three against five. Yeah, but Bakugo showed us the mist guy's weakness. Kirishima activated his quirk and hardened his hands. Think you could do it again? He'll be paying attention this time. The explosion user crackled his knuckles, giving a savage look. But it's not that impossible. No! All Might yelled, stretching his arms out to stop the students. All of you have to get out of here! I agree! Izuku nodded, activating all or nothing, and wrapped the light tendrils around his students. What the? Sensei, let me go, you shitty teacher! Enough! Izuku spoke calmly the look on his face similar to Aizawa-sensei's when he was angry. Immediately, 
the two of the three shut up, while the third kept trying to free themselves. Taking a deep breath, Izuku looked at All Might. End it quickly. I'll keep them safe. The number one hero clenched his fist. You students sit back. Now it's time for a pro to show you what it means to get serious. Tomura clicked his tongue. Why wouldn't All Might just die already? This level had already dragged on longer than he expected. Nomu, Hiraguri, you handle All Might, the decay villain said, looking directly at Izuku. I'll deal with the brats and secure the glitch. Toshinori took a deep breath and reached deep inside all for one, assessing his remaining time. It was declining faster than ever, which meant he only had a little time left. A minute or two at most. But that was all he needed. Let's clear this level and go home already. As the number one hero, All Might had a duty to win this fight, to stop these villains. Because All Might was the world's symbol of peace and justice. Spiraling into action, both sides begin their attacks. All Might's target, not the two coming for his life, but rather the one who had given the command. It was an age-old lesson that when you were fighting against a group, sometimes the best way to stop it was to take out the enemy's commander. Nomu, sensing the danger its master was in, ran forward to protect Tomura Shigaraki. Two fists met each other again, a shockwave resulted. Had Izuku not held the students, they might have been sent flying backwards like Tomura was. Coughing slightly from the resulting dust, the decay villain looked back. Have you forgotten Nomu has shock resistant? That's right. All Might grinned as the pair began berating each other with punches. What about it? The blows gradually became faster until neither side could see them. Hiroshima watched in shock. He's gonna fight that brain guy head on? So manly. So fast. Todoroki spoke, unable to believe what he saw. Izuku dug his feet into the ground, doing his best to watch the battle. His nephew indeed was amazing. The all or nothing user couldn't help but marvel at the number one hero, as though he was a child again, reading comic books with his brothers. No. Kurigiri growled, the wind from the punches preventing him from assisting Nomu. I can't get near them. He said, you have shock absorption, not shock resistance, All Might said, landing just as many blows on Nomu's torso as he was taking. That means there's a limit to how many hits you can take. Am I right, big guy? Nomu let out a shriek, almost like it was responding to the hero's question. It took Tomura a moment to clue in on the hero's plan. By the time he had figured it out, Nomu was already being pushed back. He said you're able to fight me at 100? All Might yelled, moving faster. Then I'll have to go beyond that and force you to surrender. Even the students watching from above couldn't help but take notice, despite his injuries. All Might was giving it his all, fighting for their sake. The remnants of people's quirks inside of Nomu and the body that hosts them started to band together with a single thought. As the main body moved, trying to connect the fight, they felt a flicker of hope. They may not be able to disobey orders in this fight, but maybe, just maybe, All Might, or that child who'd heard them, could save them, could end their suffering. Nomu slammed into the concrete, shattering it, and bouncing upwards as All Might landed in front of them. Now for a lesson. You may have heard these words before. The number one hero spoke, standing tall as though his body was not covered in cuts and rapid-forming bruises. But let me teach you what it really means. All, all might summon the remains of one for all, putting his fist back for one last attack. Go beyond. Had no move the ability still, their eyes would be shut, and they would be smiling. Plus ultra. The resulting blow sent Nomu hurtling backwards into the roof of the USJ. The sudden earthquake was quite a shock for all the students still trapped and unaware. For the teachers, running to USJ to help the students seeing something flying out of the USJ building, made them move faster. Izuku resisted his restraints on the students, letting out a sigh of relief. That was like a finishing move in a video game, Kirishima said as Bakugo and Todoroki looked at the large hole in the roof. 
I have never seen such brute force strength like that. Imagine how much power he has to have. Bakugo clenched his fist. He must have been punching that monster too fast for it to regenerate. Todoroki nodded, now understanding what his father was truly up against. The gap that separated Endeavor from the number one spot. All Might knew that wasn't over. There was still the danger of the two villains left to contain with. As much as the number one hero would love to finish this, he was fading fast. There was only one course of action he could take. Bluff. I can't believe it. In my prime, that should have taken only five hits. All Might let the smoke clear a little and stood tall. Fists clenched, staring at the two across the plaza, praying this would work. But today it took 330 blows. All Might observed the pair's body language. The younger male was visibly shaking in fear or anger. It was hard to tell, but the warp gate user, but the mist surrounding them did appear to move faster. You're beaten, All Might spoke, leaving no room for argument. Surrender! and let this end without hurting anyone else. One hand raised and began to scratch the villain's neck. You cheated. Yet, All Might and Izuku thought together. The bluff didn't work. If anything, it just made the two angrier than they were before. Cheater! Tomura yelled like a child throwing a tantrum. Cheater, you dirty cheater! How dare you do that to my Nomu! You, you're not weaker at all! They lied to me! Tomura Shigaraki. Kirigiri spoke, trying to calm his charge down. Well, All Might glared at the pair. What happened to all that talk just now about clearing this level and going home? If you still like this, you can take me, then bring it on. Izuku bit his lip. He knew from the start that Toshi was bluffing, and that the smoke coming off him wasn't just from the battle just now. One for all was reaching its limits for the day. And there wasn't a damn thing Izuku could do to help his nephew, except keeping his secret. You three, Izuku turned and looked at the students, gesturing to where the most of their class was. Entrance now. We- I said now, damn it! The green-haired teacher yelled again, making the three jump and nod. Turning to the trio, and they made their way back towards the nearby ruin zone. It would mean going the long way around the stairs, but if it meant not getting caught up with the surprise of a warp gate and taken hostage, it was worth it. Golden Eyes watched the three leave before looking back at the remaining child. Tomar Shigaraki, please calm yourself. Numu appears to have done more damage than it appears. The warp gate user talked softly, like the ashen-haired charge was still the child they first met. The glitch, as you call him, has sent the student children away. And if my calculations are correct, reinforcements will be arriving soon. But if the two of us team up... Tomoro stopped his scratching and took a deep breath. We might be able to clear this level and take our prize. Despite how much the decay user acted towards his caretaker, Tomoro and Kirigiri could work together flawlessly. After years of practice, all it took was the subtle movement of a finger before a black mist ran besides Tomura ready to shield him instantly from attack. This is for Nomu! The trio headed to the ruins. All suddenly stopped and looked behind them. In a blink of an eye, Izuku was launched towards the villains, much like he had done to the Zero Pointer on exam day. Underneath, Father, Tomura was amazed at the speed the glitch possessed. Sensei's form suddenly overlapped with this brat as it readied itself to deliver a knock-out blow. It was no longer to achieve their goals, so Tomura made a split-second decision. Pledging his hands into Kurogiri's gate, he would grab this brat and take them to Sensei. Sensei would be able to fight. Bang! Tomura maintained eye contact despite the pain he was in. The glitch's anger morphed into fear, and he reached out, now, not to attack Tomura, but instead, it looked like he was trying to protect him. Kuchan! Kuchan. Who is that? Tomura wondered, as more shots rang out. Sorry for the delay, everyone. A familiar high-pitched voice called out. I gathered as many teachers as possible on short notice. 
Many students felt like they finally saw the light at the end of the dark tunnel. And amongst the teachers gathered, two familiar faces struck out. Ida took a deep breath and bellowed so loud that even President Mike was impressed. Vice President of 1A Ida Tenya reporting for. The youngest Ida had suddenly pushed down as someone appeared behind him. May Hatsumi of May Industries here to fuck all you up. The inventor spoke, earning a groan from Power Loader, and she smacked a wrench, threatening in her open hand. Why did I agree to bring her again? Midnight pursed her lips slightly, because she threatened to unleash all her babies if we left for her behind. Some of the recovered villains looked up at the teachers of the top hero school in the country. Only one thought on their mind as they rushed the entrance. Escape. Beyond orange lenses, usually bright eyes locked coldly down at the people who had hurt President Mike's husband. Taking a deep breath, the DJ released a rage-filled scream. Yeah! Tomura cranked his injured hand. Wanting to cover his ears at the sound, tossed his new recruits backwards. Ugh, guess they all arrived. Looks like we have to try again some other time. Kura bullets rang down from above, embedding themselves in Tomura's body. Oh no, you don't, partner, Snipe said, shooting as fast as he could. Feeling each impact, Tomura stumbled backwards and on to the safety of Kurigiri's gate. But instead of a familiar action of opening another gate to the bar, Kirigiri, in its place, felt like he was being pulled off the ground. Cursing, the villain looked towards the top of the plaza. Thirteen. That's right, the rescue hero said, arms shaking slightly. Kirigiri increased his closing speed. He could not allow Tomura Shigaraki to be caught by the heroes. There would be no way for Kirigiri to protect him if he was. Tomura was about to threaten All Might when something else caught his attention. The glitch was kneeling on the ground, crying, hands digging into the dirt where the bright red blood stained the ground. But what really caught Tomura's attention was that the glitch was saying, I'm sorry, Asashi. I'm sorry, it's my fault. As adorable as I find you calling me sensei all the time, you should still know my true name. It's Asashi. Hisashi Shigaraki. Just who was this glitch? Tumor thought as Kirigiri closed the gate. Ooh, wiping those tears away. Ah, uh, oh my god. Okay, so, um, Izuka didn't 100% find out that, you know, Shigaraki is, you know, um, <laughs> being taken care of by his brother, you know? So, I'll see how that plays along and stuff like that. I wonder if Shigaraki is going to find out exactly who Izuku is, and the fact that, technically speaking, Izuku would be considered, quote-unquote, his uncle. Um, and my, my thing is, I forgot that probably gunshots and big loud bangs would be Izuku's, or, or big loud bangs, because like in most of his flashbacks um, in the beginning of the story, back in the, the first part of the series, uh, loud bangs would always be heard in his memories and stuff like that. So like, I completely forgot like that loud bangs or something like a gunshot or stuff like that would very much trigger him, you know? Um, and obviously this this triggered something. He He's probably thinking about how his nephew died and got back into that flashback. As I said, he's, he definitely has fucking PTSD and is, is obviously sobbing right now. Um, and, and it's back in that flashback and the way he reacts saying the whole I'm sorry he definitely has not just PTSD but he probably has uh, what's it called survivor's guilt definitely I mean to be the only one out of that household to be able to like live him his brother and his other brother and even he didn't fully fully live right it's 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 the whole I should have died with them. Why am I alive? It's my fault. Um, which also comes the whole um, self-blaming because he genuinely does feel like it's his fault. He started all this. He for for even if it's not true because it's not it's not it's not his fault. But that's what he feels. Uh, psychologically wise, it's really hard to perceive death in 
grieve properly that you end up it, it's why there's like the stages of grief but it's why you end up some people end up blaming themselves even when logically there is no way they're linked back to it like let's say for example a loved one dies of a car accident right um that person blames himself oh i i should have been more time with them i should have done this i should have done that if I'd done this, maybe that wouldn't have happened. They get enwrapped in the what ifs. It's why a lot of the time you see the whole what if scenario come up in people's mind after big traumatic events because they're blaming themselves. They're trying to find a reasoning, right? Because if they blame themselves, then they could hold themselves accountable. But if the reason to blame is somebody else, it's hard to accept that because although with yourself, you could say, well, I, I'll, I'll do better, I'll be better, I'll, I'll whatever, right? And they could, you know, be quote unquote held responsible when it's somebody else's, you know, actions or stuff like that, or even worse, natural death, natural causes. And, you know, really there is nobody to blame. It's hard to wrap your mind around the fact that it just happened. There is no one to blame. There is no, I'm sorry. There is no quote unquote re uh, regular closure. You know, um, which is why the mind wraps around stuff like that. Like, for example, in this case, it's not Izuku's fault. It really isn't. It's that other person's fault who killed them, right? For their own prejudice and stuff like that. But Izuku's mind can't really fully wrap around that and instead decides to blame themselves because one, they shouldn't have come out alive. He shouldn't have quote unquote come alive in his own mentality and thoughts. And two, if he can't blame himself then how is he going to blame someone who died probably 200 years ago? If he's not to blame, and he can't blame that other person, and he can't hold that other person accountable anymore, what am I going to do with all these emotions? How am I going to get quote-unquote closure, right? Which, closure, you could get it in many different ways. Some people find closure when, uh, let's say, uh, a, a close loved one of theirs dies and, and it's because of a murder. They get closure once that person gets quote unquote justice. Some people get closure later down in the road when they finally learn to live with the grief. Because that's the funny thing about grief. Grief never fully goes away. Grief is something that you carry with you forever. You know? Um, you lose a close one, whatever. It stays with you. You will always grieve that person. Right? What does change and what does go is you learn to live with that grief. Instead of that grief being something horrible and wretched that always makes you sob and cry, you learn to turn that into bittersweet. It will never be sweet. You will never be like, oh, you know, I remember back, blah, 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 blah. You're thinking about the past memories and you have completely happy memories. A small part of you will always be a bit sad about it. You never really fully, you know, move on from grief. Grief stays with you. Grief is a scar. What does happen with that huge cut that you got after that person quote unquote dies, metaphorically huge cut, not actual huge cut, let me just clarify, is it, it scars over, but it, it never really leaves. Maybe the scar fades a bit and it's barely seeable, but it's always there, you know? Um, scars are always there. Even if you can't see it, um, the scar tissue, it's there. Even if the untrained eye can't really see it. You know, and some scars stay forever and they scar ugly. Others don't, you know, it just depends on the type of grief, but whatever. So uh, closure is, is different for everybody. And clearly Izuku is going through a lot of grief, right? And it's not just like, oh, he's grieving after 2000 years still. No, for him, it's probably been a couple months, right? No longer than a year. Of like his family dying right and grief is a long process to fully like process and be able to live with like the most is like a year I think of you know his family dying for all we know his family could have died and then like a couple days later he gets you know um, frozen it's not like this is like something that um, he's gonna have to live like he's lived with for a little bit no it, he's probably still processing it and it doesn't help that he's a 15 year old 14 15 year old you know that mm, trauma already messes with the mind so much on a, uh as an adult but as a teen as a child 
that stuff can really, really mess you up, right? You could learn, you could, you know, re quote unquote, re, quote unquote reprogram your brain so that it doesn't um, hurt you as much. But sometimes, like, it's so hard that it's practically impossible, you know? Like, sometimes it's just too much. Like, for example, Freezuku. He will never be able to reprogram the PTSD. That is there to stay. No matter what he does, he will always have PTSD. There is no quote-unquote cure. It's a traumatic experience. It's a traumatic response and coping me mechanism that the brain forms. Which I think it's really cool how PTSD forms and and why it forms. Uh, it's 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 a coping mechanism and a survival technique that the brain uses, right? Um, that it messes up a person to the point where you know they have flashbacks and are crying over the fact that a villain got shot and is literally crying because they saw blood and they relate this person with their nephew is a completely different you know <laughs> that's uh that's that that's not that's not very healthy but it, it is what it is it happens but yeah i've been ranting for a really long time <laughs> but yeah that's that's what i have to say i cannot wait for the next couple chapters we're nearing the end unfortunately i'm gonna be starting to see what fan fiction i might choose next i'm looking towards a uh, shindeku fanfic i know shindeku isn't a very uh i haven't seen that many podfics about it um from what i've seen so i might be doing some more shindeku i might do a bakudeku i don't know or a, an eraser mic i don't know i'm still trying to see what fan fictions I have, I'll, I'll see for, for reels and stuff like that and which one I'm willing to do. Although I'm leaning a little more towards the Shin Deku one because that one was a really good fanfic that I recently read. So it's not like um, you guys are going to be seeing my, my you know reactions and stuff like that. I've read it and I was like, this is a really, really good one and I would love to share it with you guys. It is a bit on the longer side, unfortunately. Um, so I might actually save that one for the 6 p.m. slot. Yeah, no, I'll probably say that one for the 6 p.m. slot. So I might just do um, the BKDK one in, in this one here, in this slot. I'm just trying to see which slots are easier. I want to see, I want to put the shorter series, like the shorter chapters, the series with shorter chapters in um, the 12 p.m. slot because uh, that one is the one that I have to do the, 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 the soonest as possible, especially if I'd be waking up at 10 a.m. and I have two hours to record. Um, I don't want to be stuck with a video that ends up being like 30, 40 minutes, like uh, an hour, you know, 30 to an hour, um, because then those two hours would be rushed and I would be posting late every day. Um, but yeah, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Link to my socials and my Discord server is down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.